I've got my hands on the 20 volt drill and driver combo set from Lumberjack Tools. I'm gonna to be putting them through their paces to see how they stack up, whether they can do the job, what features they've got, and ultimately, whether they're worth the money. Let's go. Let's start with the drill. Looking at the spec, you're getting a 20 volt tool with 50 newton meters of torque and some other spec that says this. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I have absolutely no idea what that stuff means. I'm sure there are plenty of nerds out there who'll be able to translate that into English for me. So feel free to tell me in the comments, but I'm making this video for everyday DIYers and hobby woodworkers who might be interested in getting themselves these tools. So I'm gonna keep this really simple and test it out to see how it actually works and you can make your decision from that. For the drill, I've got a spade bit and a forstner bit, along with your standard brad point bits and masonry bits. Before I do the test though, I'll just point out a couple of the features and things that it comes with that might be of interest to you. The twin set that I got came with four amp hour batteries, which is great because if you're buying this set as a starter and thinking about getting involved in the Lumberjack XP series platform, then you're gonna wanna make sure you stack up on a few batteries, especially as some of the other tools in the range only come as a bare unit. They come in this nice little case and also have attachable belt clips. However, when I put the tools in the box with the belt clips attached, it no longer closes. These clips aren't easy to take on and off, so I can't help feeling this is an oversight when designing the storage box. The drill has two gears, which is pretty standard for a drill like this nowadays. It also features three modes, drill, drive, and hammer. The way this is visually represented is great for those of you who may not use a drill that often or who might be new to these kinds of tools. For those of you wondering how you use a drill as a hammer, it's not what you think. Wait, what? It actually just means that instead of your standard drilling where the bit simply rotates, the hammer setting rotates the bit whilst also creating a hammer movement to push the bit in and out to give more power particularly when drilling through concrete and masonry. It's got an adjustable clutch, again, standard for this kind of tool, but very useful to make sure you aren't over tightening the screws. I find this particularly useful when screwing pocket hole screws. The placement of this LED work light seems to be something that brands have started using more recently. Historically, they always seem to be under the chuck, but now I'm seeing more and more at the base of the handle. And frankly, I'm all for it. Speaking of lights, it's got the battery indicator light, which seems to be prevalent across the Lumberjack battery range, which is a great feature. I don't think I'd buy into a battery platform that doesn't have this feature, as it's really helpful, particularly when you're grabbing the drill out of the garage to do a bit of DIY in the house, only to find you've not got enough charge to get the job done. A quick check of the light, and you know if you need to swap out the battery or not. The first thing I noticed though when I got my hands on the drill was the metal chuck. This isn't something I expected to see on this kind of drill, as I fully expected a plastic one. I'm not sure what's going on underneath, but it does mean that you're less likely to crack the outer casing if you do inevitably drop it on the floor. In all honesty though, in use, I haven't felt or noticed that much of a difference compared to my DeWalt, which has a plastic one. I guess time will tell, and in theory, you'd expect the metal one to last longer. Moving on to the impact driver, and it looks pretty good. It's definitely got a longer body than some of the more recent impact drivers I've seen, such as my DeWalt, which does mean that you'll not be able to fit it into quite so small spaces all the time. The work light is in the same place again, which I like, but the main thing I noticed is the collet. It's quite long and ribbed rather than knurled, which isn't quite as grippy as most drivers, but actually not too bad. Although 99% of the time I tend to use a bit holder anyway with my impact driver, there have been times when I've needed to get into small spaces and have just chucked the bit straight into the collet to save space. I tried that with this one and thought I'd lost my bit in there. Fortunately, I was able to get it out with a magnet, Looks like I'll only be using longer bits with this one then. Now you might be asking, but Ben, why would I need an impact driver if the drill has the ability to do screwdriving as well? well? That's a great question, dear viewer. And I actually did an entire video about what an impact driver is and why you should use it. So I'll link to that in the description for you to check out after this one. Right, that's how they look on first impressions, but let's jump into some tests and see if we can put their money where their mouth is. While I set up for this, It'd be great if you could just quickly hit that like button and you may as well hit the subscribe button as well while you're at it. Right, I've got myself a big bit of wood that I'm gonna be putting lots of holes and screws into. For comparison, I'll be doing the same with my DeWalt versions of these tools using the same battery size and making sure that they're fully charged before starting out. We can then see which one comes out on top. It is worth pointing out that my DeWalt tools are 18 volt, whereas the Lumberjack ones are 20 volt. So in theory, they should see the Lumberjack showing more power throughout. Spoiler alert, this wasn't always the case. First up, drilling. We're gonna start with the standard Brad Point bit. 
After a few holes, it was clear that there was no problem with this type of bit, and the speed and the ease was comparable to the DeWalt. So let's give it a bit more of a challenge by drilling a deep hole with a spade bit. This was without a doubt more difficult. Almost immediately it started to struggle, so I tried switching the gears and did eventually make it through, but the power definitely wasn't enough to be doing this type of drilling on a regular basis. Comparing this with the DeWalt, I definitely got more torque from the DeWalt as it caught at one point and nearly broke my wrist. It also struggled a bit part way through though, so I switched the gears and it flew through to the end with no further problem. I'd have to give the spade bit drilling to the DeWalt. After the spade bit, I moved on to the Forstner bit. The plan with this was to go to the depth of the bit and the Lumberjack performed really well on this one. Right, moving on from the wood, I want to see how it goes through this brick. Both tools start out strong and with the same amount of pressure put on both ends, it's pretty much a dead heat. So I'm happy with the overall result on the brick. Even if I did get a face full of dust at one point. Now although the drill performed pretty well in general, it's worth pointing out that I've been using these tools for a little while prior to these tests. And in general, I haven't had any problems. However, on a couple of occasions I've had the drill bit come out of the chuck. I think this is more user error than anything else, but I found that this chuck does need tightening up a bit more than the DeWalt one. Either that, or the chuck occasionally comes loose. But it's something that I've never had happen to me with my DeWalt drills. Moving on to the driver, I'm going to see how quickly and easily it drives a long screw into the wood without a pilot hole. There's no doubting that this thing is fast and powerful. The variable speed is set within the trigger, so you need to get to feel for the tool, but once you do, you can control the tool really well. The other observation I've made with the driver is the sound. It sounds less smooth than my DeWalt. It's not caused me any problems, and it may just be how it sounds, so take a listen for yourself. So the tests show that these tools are a good overall DIY set. I would probably suggest that someone working in the trade should spend a bit more money and get a higher end set. But if you're an everyday DIYer and hobbyist like me, then I don't think you'll be hitting those limitations anytime soon. Ultimately, I think your decision around whether to buy this set or not will be based on two things. Does it fit your budget and are you planning to buy more cordless tools? If you're planning to buy more cordless tools as part of the set, which Lumberjack have a bunch of different bundles available, or if you're planning to add more tools to your collection further down the line, then you'll need to assess a few different brands and check that they have all the tools you want. If Lumberjack has all those tools you would need, then I'd say go for it. If they don't, then you need to spend a bit more money and go with another brand such as Ryobi, DeWalt, Makita or Milwaukee. I do have some more of the cordless tools from Lumberjack that I'm planning to review and if you're keen on seeing a particular one next then let me know in the comments and I'll look at doing that one next. I'll leave a link to these ones on the Lumberjack Amazon page. If you buy through these links it really helps my channel and allows me to keep making these videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be notified when I release those next videos but in the meantime you can watch this one right here. See you next time.